This is a, a joint work with uh, Guidon Fenning, who is a PhD student at UBC, which is up north with the funny money. And uh, Giovanni Gallipoli, that is, uh, my, who is my colleague at uh, the university. Um, so how do we come to this project? Let me give you some background. Um, there have been thousands of uh, works on public good games in particular the LVCM mechanism, um, uh, using both lab and field uh, data. And the results are very robust. You have contributions, people start contributing, and it diminishes over time. Um, and then the positive contribution that you have early on are often uh, interpreted as an evidence for some type of altruism, some kind of other regarding preferences. Uh, what we claim, and this is how we came to uh, think about it, is that the linear mechanism misses a, a crucial component that is actually very uh, common when you think of a provision of public good, uh, and especially if you think about charities, uh, which is the complementarity. Think that you are volunteering in some... Uh, you know, not necessarily a modern society, but you want to create some group, you're creating some public good in, with effort. So this requires a coordination between the members of the group. And usually it has two components. First, if you contribute, it increases the marginal contribution of, on my contribution. And the second, if we take a sum of contribution, it is more uh, efficient. It gives a higher output if it is e equally divided between members of the group. So these are the two components that we are after. Okay. Um, so what we do in this paper is we vary the degree of complementarity and we see how it affects their responses both theoretically and in lab setting. Uh, a part that I will not report here, but uh, I'll show you how we collect the data, is that we collect a lot of non-choice data about the decision-making process that a uh, subject go through. And this allows us to kind of penetrate their mind and see how they reach a decision. This is, uh, I think this is a, an innovation that should be implemented by anyone who is doing kind of uh, uh, an experiment that uses uh, an interface. We just, there is this data, we are not collecting it and not analyzing it, and this data is very valuable in understanding actually how decisions are made. So let me describe the environment. So we have individuals, think about four individuals in the group, it will be the setup that we have later. And they have uh, to choose how to allocate an endowment of omega between investment in the private account and investment in the group account. And the payoff function is that my payoff will be my private account, which is omega minus GI. GI is my contribution to the group account. So this is what I have in my private account, plus beta times some output I get from the aggregation of the inputs of others in the account. So this is, if you think of it, this is just a CAS production function uh, with a degree of complementarity of rho between the other group members. If you think here that rho would be equal to one, this would be just the sum of the contributions. So this would be a standard linear case. Okay? And beta is the constant. So this is clearly a generalization on, of the LVCM model that we all studied and was done many, many times, okay? What would be my best response if I'm a, a selfish individual? So my, self res uh, my best response would be a linear function of the generalized mean of the contributions of the other members. The generalized mean is just a uh, generalization of the arithmetic, arithmetic mean. So it would be k times the generalized mean of my belief of my 
what I believe my other uh, would uh, what others would con contribute. And this cap, uh, this k could be either greater than one or smaller than one. And it depends on the degree of complementarity. It depends on the, uh, on beta, on the, on the number of other agents, and on their, uh, con and that's all, okay? So this is, uh, this slope of the best response is a function of all these three parameters. But basically you can say that it will be greater one or smaller than one as a function of this row. So uh, you can basically have a threshold of, if you keep beta and n constant, you will have a threshold of complementarity where you can vary the best response, whether it will be a slope of greater or smaller than one. So what it creates, it creates in a, an environment, in a, if you look at equilibrium that is symmetric, it will generate, if k is smaller than one, you'll have a unique equilibrium with a zero contribution. Remember in the linear case, you have a unique equilibrium with zero in dominant strategies. If rho is uh, smaller than one, it's a unique equilibrium with a, equili uh, with a, of zero, but it is not in dominant strategies. And if k is greater than one, you have two equilibria, one at zero and the other at full, full contribution. Okay, so in our case, the threshold of rho would be uh, with beta equal to 0.4 and n equal to 4, it would be uh, 0 0.602, a number, okay? Doesn't matter. So this is how the best response look like. So remember in the linear case, this is, so sorry, let me describe what you have in the, on the axis here. This is the arithmetic mean of the contributions of others. And this is my contribution, okay? So this is kind of, I'm plotting the best response. So assume, let's assume for a second that we are in the, in the uh, uh, symmetric case. So if I'm in the, uh, if there is no complementarity, if rho is equal to one, my best response is flat at zero, okay? If rho is equal to 0.70, which is higher than the threshold, then the slope is smaller than one, and this is my best response. What I plotted here in the, do, in the dotted line, in the dashed line, is the best response if there is maximum dispersion. So in the, if there is maximum dispersion, then the general mean would be sm smaller than the arithmetic mean. So you see there is some difference between them. But in any case, it's below the 45 degree line, okay? In the 0.65, it's still below the, uh, with a slope of smaller than one. And again, uh, this is, would be the general mean. What happens if you have enough complementarity? If you have enough complementarity, basically what you have is the slope would be greater than one, and then people will, uh, the equilibrium would be either at zero or at full contribution. Okay, so this is how the best response functions look like. So what are the treatments? We have uh, 128 subjects, 16 subjects per session, setting beta equal to 0.4 in a group of four, endowment of 20. Uh, they played 20 rounds with a stranger protocol. It's actually more than a stranger protocol because we maximize the distance, the number of times each subject will, uh, will uh, be in the same group with others. So over 20 rounds, if we have 16 subjects, the minimum number of you'll interact with other is four, and if you interacted with another group member, we guarantee that the other two group members will not be the same, okay? So you can calculate it with this matching, with, with the matching protocol. We paid one, and we had control questions before starting the experiment, bef basically understanding their environment, understanding their, uh, the production function. And the treatments were exactly what I showed you before. Two treatments, we, in the linear case, with a unique equilibrium of zero, we in dominant strategies. Two equilibrium with uh, intermediate level of complementarity of 0.65, but it's still a unique equilibrium of uh, uh, zero. And two with high, com high degree of complementarity. And then we had one and one session where we are close to this uh, and close to this. 
Okay? So this is the design. Any questions? Just to see the interface the subject faced, uh, were faced with. So you, don't, you cannot give them a payoff table. And if, even if the, you'll give them, we believe it would be kind of uh, overwhelming. So what we give them, we give them a calculator, which is a slider in which they can enter the contributions of others using a slider or enter it over here. So this would be their conjectures about how, many, how much others are going to contribute. And then they can enter their ho own hypothetical contribution. And then they can see what would be their private account income, group account income, and their overall income. So they can vary. Let's say you fix the contributions, the, your conjectures about the contributions of others. You can vary your own contribution, let's say, to maximize your income, or you can do many things. Yes? You know, it pushes them to be aware of what's yeah. going on. Maybe, but at least, but at least they understand what's going on. Okay. Um, anyway, after you do all these calculations, you put the actual contribution here and push uh, submit. Okay. Yes. Yes, everything, everything you do there is uh, recorded. And this is the feedback. After the round is over, you said you invested 13. Other contributed 20, 10, and 3. Your private account income is 7. This is 20 minus 13. Your group account income is a function of all these four contributions, 46. So your total contribution is 53.65, and you move to the next round. This is the results. These are the results. So let's start from the linear case. In the linear case, what you see is you start with an average con contribution of uh, around 5, and you go down to around 1, 2 at uh, tw the 20th round. If you have just a little bit of complementarity, it tracks it very closely. Actually, there is no statistical difference between these two sessions and this session. OK, remember, the, in these three treatments, the unique equilibrium is at 0. OK? In the high complementarity case, remember, in the high complementarity case, there are two equilibria, 0 or full contribution. What you see is you start higher. And you go even higher. Okay? You basically uh, converge very close to the full contribution. Again, there is no statistical difference between these two. This is the 0.54 and 0.58. If you look at the intermediate case of 0.65, in which you have a unique equilibrium of at 0, we don't find any convergence. Okay? So although there is a unique equilibrium with full basin of attraction, there is no convergence to equilibrium. So this is a stranger treatment. So there is no group. So I, the fact that I was matched with you in, in the seventh round, I will not be much with you in the eighth or the ninth round, for example. So there's no, there are no groups here. Excuse me? We have a lot of session level data. We have two sessions here, here, and here. There's no, so, no, no, so she's asking about group level. She's not asking. Yes, we didn't find any, right? So this is why uh, we didn't find any session level. You know, so in, in some of the sessions, for example, here, we had subjects that uh, consistently contributed zero. It didn't interfere with the convergence. 
Okay, so in spite of the fact that subjects were contributed very low, people were, were understood that, you know, they come and go, but, you know, I am going to continue and contribute. If you look at their coordination, the coordination actually tells a very interesting story. So this is uh, what we call a dispersion loss. It's an index that measures how well you coordinate. And of course, you need to uh, correct this index to the degree of complementarity. Uh, but what you can see is that these are the sessions with uh, the low level of the, uh, complementarity and actually there is no convergence, you know, to zero, while actually in the degree, in the sessions with the high complementarity, people were able to better coordinate. Although, remember, in the high complementarity, there are two equilibria, but they're able to coordinate better, and we saw it was on the high level of complementarity. So, again, what I'm saying before is that uh, we collected all this information about the conjectures, about the hypothetical contribution, how many times you use the calculator, uh, in what order, how long did it take you to take a decision, etc. All this is tracked. I'm not going to report the results, but the type of questions we're asking, uh, I think, are fascinating. And these are kind of our conjectures influenced by realized history of other players' contribution. How do subjects adjust behavior from one round to the next? Is there any evidence for history dependent in the best response strategy? Uh, if so, how this is reflected in the use of the calculator? Do subjects in specific treatment use the calculator more or less intensively? Uh, how do they experiment with hypothetical contribution? How does this relate to their actual contribution? How long does it take them to make a decision? So all these are uh, things that you can actually, you get into the subject's head, you see exactly what they do, how they make a decision, and this is just wonderful data that we usually ignore when we analyze only the choice data. This is mouse tracking. No, this is not mouse tracking, because mouse tracking, when you have mouse tracking, everybody knows that you are tracked, okay? So here we actually, while they enter the data, they don't know that we actually, they're like Amazon, you're going on Amazon, every click you do on Amazon is being tracked. Oh, okay. so it's, clicks. it's just clicks, whatever numbers you put there. Okay? So the, there is close relation to uh, works that has been done in stunt hand game of coordination. Basically we kind of, uh, you can view it as uh, marrying uh, this paper is marrying kind of the stag hunt coordination papers with uh, public good literature. Um, uh, there is a, a case of an extreme, uh, extreme uh, uh, degree of complementarity, which is the weakest link, in which the results are kind of some, sometimes you get coordination, sometimes you don't get co coordination. And there is a paper that talks about strategic substitute and complements, which is um, uh, not directly related, but since the word complements and has it, so it's, uh, we, I put it here. Yeah, complement and not substitute. Anyway, so let me just uh, recap. Uh, so what we see is in high complementarity subjects learn to, uh, subject learn to coordinate on an efficient outcome. In very low complementarity, you find coordination on the unique uh, in inefficient Nash equilibrium. Uh, in a low complementarity, we don't find evidence for convergence. Uh, so kind of what we can see is that the over-contribution in the linear case looks very similar to under-contribution in the high complementarity. So, it's just is a flip side. If you look at the, if you look at how the subject actually are, that are not contributing zero or contributing less than full uh, contribution in the high complementarity, they are making the same type of choices using the calculator the same way. It's just, just the flip side. So if they were altruistic in the, this case, how come they became spiteful in that case? 
just um, it raises some questions. Uh, if we look at the data of the non-choice data, we find that subject, some subjects behave very strategically. So they find, basically, they fix the conjecture and best respond to them, like we would think game theorists are using, while other subjects think reason differently. And uh, what exactly they do, we, we can talk later. But basically, having their, them in the experiment basically affects the response. In one, in one case, it makes the result more efficient. In other cases, it reduces the inefficiency. Thank you. It has a unique, right. There is no convergence whatsoever. So what's happening there? We don't have a theory, right? But what we, we can see what's happening, there are some subjects, if you look at the non-choice, there are some subjects, about 40, 50% of the subject actually are best responding. Remember, best responding there is not contributing zero. It's even if others are contributing 10, you best respond by contributing 5, OK? While the others are actually contributing above 10. So this is why you get this hovering. It could be right, so you, you enter some decision noise. But this is not what, so this is the advantage of actually uh, looking at the data. Those subjects that are uh, may not best, subjects that are best responding are best responding exactly. Subjects that are not best responding, they are not described by some logistic error. Right, so this, okay, excellent question. So this is why I'm uh, kind of, uh, so basically your conjectures are based on the past two rounds. We found very strong evidence that the conjectures they use is actually based on the last two rounds only of play. Way much more recent one, yeah. Yes. I didn't understand, sorry. Okay, sorry. We can talk later. Thank you. Thank you again.